Hello classmates, my name is Marta Flores Montoya and I'll be presenting my strategy uh, for uh, the 50, 50 strategies. Well, so my strategy was strategy five, which I was like so happy. I was like, I always wanted to learn about how to use items in our class. Strategy five, um, it, it's the word is realia. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correct, but it's a strategy um, used by teachers. Um, so this sentence that I got right here that are, that are you're seeing right now is the relia. Relia is a term for real things, concrete objects that are used in the classroom to build background knowledge and vocabulary. Relia provides students with opportunities to build on their learning using all their senses. I wanted to read this out because I feel like everything was needed. Um, when I first read the word, I was a little bit confused, like, what does that mean? So what it means is that you use a concrete object um, and it's an opportunity to use other senses, feeling, looking, smelling. So if you bring an object like a banana, they could probably smell the banana, you know, and it gets all in their senses. Um, if you don't have a banana with you, then you can have this uh, fake food. And that would be the semi relia. <clears throat> but if you do have a banana, then the best option is a real concrete object. This strategy suggests to have a real life item. Um, to include with the book or the lesson and there's other ways that you can use this also this is just a quint uh, continuation of what I was talking about um, so these are the steps that I found on the chapter um, it is identify relia that means going out to a garage sale and you see the fake food that I was talking about. Obviously, you're going to get it for 10 cents, 20 cents. Bring it back home and put it in your collection box. Um, so that's the following next step, collecting relia for your class. And the third step would be to build the relia. That means like separating stuff like all the fake food here all the plants here all the kitchen items here anything that you know that would be good use for your classroom um you can use relio for field trips and you can use relio for assessing um that's kind of like when you're doing an assessment you want to know the children's vocabulary okay and then let's bring all the fruit out okay how do you say banana or can you tell me what this item is and you know they'll say uh banana oh, let, oh can you tell me in english and then you're gonna know what their level is in english and how their home language is and this is just a chart that i thought was like amazing to use um okay so there's a category so the items that you can have so let's say you have a library. Let's make a library for Relia. We have categories one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And in this, in the book, it says household items, food, clothing, literacy materials, farm, flowers and plants, animals, arts and crafts. Um, I can pick out one for example: clothing, different kinds of hats, gloves sweaters jackets boots anything that you can use um to build on vocabulary for story reenacting uh, for writing purpose or oral language practice okay so my lesson would be um for a first grade a beginner english 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 i'm sorry in english language learner student um, I chose uh, The Amazing Life Cycle of Plants. Um, the book is by Kay Barnham and, <clears throat> and the TIG was to identify and compare parts of plants. And the objective is for the student to 
know that plants and humans resemble each other. Oh look, so this is my item. I have a plant. It's a sunflower. It's, this is an image. So this would be used as a as an semi relia. Uh, it is not a concrete because it's just an image. So it's not using all the sensories for the children. But in class, I would obviously bring a plant. Um, for class, I would obviously bring a plant. I can bring this into class and tell the students, do you want to... Um, this is the plant that I would probably bring to, bring to class because it is a real life plant. They could probably touch it, smell it, um, look at it. Obviously, they can't hear from it. But they can touch the soil, they can touch the petals, and they can look at it. And it's a small little plant that they can observe. For the image, I would tell them a fun fact about sunflowers. There is um, 60 types of sunflowers. Um, for sunflowers, is native to the America. And they were actually used by the Native Americans. And some flowers get the name because they're big, like the sun. And if you can look at the little petals, it kind of resembles like the sun, right? Well, they need rich soil. Um, they don't need to be watered as much. Um, they do attract a lot of bees. Bees love sunflowers. And that's something, you know, cool to learn. Maybe they'll attach that to uh, parts of the plants and they're learning about plants um, it's always nice to have a fun fact where they can know well I know this fun fact about some flowers <laughs> okay let's go to the next slide and then this is the book that I chose uh, the amazing life cycle of plants I can play it for a little bit The Amazing Life Cycle of Plants by Kay Barnum Illustrated by Maddie Frost Check out the Super Eats channel and subscribe for new stories every week. Look around you. How many plants and flowers and trees and grasses can you see? These natural beauties grow over and over again. But how do they do it? Get ready to dig deep and find out more about the amazing life cycle of a plant. A seed is a baby plant. It is wrapped in a shell to keep it safe. And that was a small clip of the amazing life cycle of plants. It tells you how the plant begins and all the way down. And then we can just talk about what, what is a petal, you know, parts of the plants. So that would be all for today. That's all. Thank you.